In Movies and Money, Disney disappointed investors as growth in subscribers is slowing down more than expected for its streaming service. Let's check in now with film critic Eric Childress. Hello to you, Eric. Hi, Angie. Disney-owned Eternals joined the top films of the box office this year. How do you feel this film is going to do going forward? Well, we may not know until this weekend's numbers to see if word of mouth is going to be as mediocre as most reviews of Eternals. I was actually on the positive side of that. But before we get there, we must acknowledge that Chloe Zhao's comic book film had the fourth biggest opening of the year with $71.2 million, behind, of course, three other films, each with their own direct connection to the larger Marvel Universe. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, Black Widow, and Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings all opened between 75 and 90 million. In its favor, we are likely to see Eternals in the top 10, probably all the way up to just before Christmas, but it all becomes about the drops now. You're talking about drops here. We have to mention a Halloween film that is setting a very dubious record. It is, Angie. Now, just last month, we were marveling at how Halloween Kills, despite being available as part of anyone's Peacock subscription, opened to a $49 million weekend. Well, that was lower than its 2018 predecessor did when it started with $76 million. But given all the asterisks in place during this time, it was still a very impressive number. Well, let me give you another number, because that one is headed towards box office infamy. Despite pulling in $85 million in its first 17 days, the last of which being Halloween itself, David Gordon Green's sequel took a post-Halloween nosedive last weekend and looks as if it will not reach the golden $100 million milestone. But Halloween Kills will now have the distinction of being the film with the highest opening weekend ever to not reach $100 million. In a few weeks, as it finishes up its theatrical run, Halloween Kills will now own that title. Let's get down to it with what movie fans have to look forward to this weekend, starting with Belfast. Well, if you have Paramount Plus, you can actually cozy up with the family to watch Clifford the Big Red Dog, which is also in theaters. If you are headed out to your local theater, your best bet may be Kenneth Branagh's new semi-autobiographical film, Belfast, which has been drawing rave reviews and is considered by many to be a real player in the upcoming awards season. Then you may have to look around for it or wait another week or two for the delightful documentary Julia about the French chef's Julia Child, which is a much richer film than the half a movie she got years ago with Meryl Streep. But if you are in Chicago, the film festival which I produce, the Chicago Critics Film Festival, returns this very weekend with a variety of hand-picked films curated by myself and other notable Chicago film critics such as Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Lost Daughter, Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog and Sean Baker's Red Rocket, amongst many others, that you will also hear bandied about on people's ballots this season. It's a great way to get ahead of the season at the glorious Music Box Theater in Chicago. We didn't know when we would be back after our last event in 2019, but we are, if only for a weekend this year, and we can't wait to share these films with the moviegoers as we all begin to feel safe again about going back into movie theaters, especially one as incredible as The Music Box. It is a wonderful theater. Thank you so much, Eric, and enjoy your film festival. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.